Are you ready to twist and scale? This is part five of the beginner blender tutorial. I'm Joe. And if you followed along with our last video, your homework was to kind of build up this cube of objects. Some of them lined up on the X, some of them lined up on the Y and some lined up on the Z and they don't have to be perfect, but you can tell that some of them are constrained to the plane and some of them are constrained to the different directions. And by now you should be getting pretty good at being able to move things around and regardless of the view, control where they're going to land and just be able to, to kind of predict the way that things are going to go. And then of course you should also be really good at switching the view around and looking at things from different angles. So that's great. You're doing great. And to begin with on this video, to begin with on this lesson, we need to clear our scene. So select everything and clear it out in your chosen method and then add back in a monkey mesh. There we go. Now I'm going to teach you a couple of transform commands and I'm going to kind of be quick with them because a lot of them are a bit of repetition with what we've already learned from movement just applied to some different ideas. But to start with, we're going to start with rotation and there are multiple ways to do it. One way to do it is on the left hand side in those tools. Remember where that move tool was? Well, just below it with a little dot and a couple of arrows going around it is the rotate command. And if you click on that, our object now gets three kind of semicircles around it. One green, one red, one blue, and then actually four because there's a white circle right there. And if you click and drag on that white circle, it spins our monkey around. But if you change your view, our spin is kind of unpredictable. It's not lined up well with any particular view. And, and that's because, well, just like with movement, remember how we learned that our movement was based on our view, our rotation was similarly based on our view. And if we had our view at a strange angle, then our rotation was going to go in a strange way. Now I need to put our monkey back so we can continue. So remember, God forgives, but control Z undoes. So there we go. Control Z back to the beginning. And if you go too far and make the monkey disappear, we can actually redo. I didn't talk about this before, but if you go up to the edit menu, redo is shift control Z. I'll just hit that shift control Z and bring the monkey back. Now the red, green, and blue circles are for constrained rotation. So if I click and drag the red circle, now it's just tumbling around. Now you might notice that we're not exactly lining our rotation up perfectly. And I'll talk about that in a later video, but for now, just know that we can tumble it and that's good. So hit control Z to undo it. We can click on the green one and there we go. Our monkey's doing a barrel roll. Well, technically a aileron roll, but you know, <laughs> it's the, it's the idea. And so we can spin it around like that. And there we go. My monkey's upside down and hit control Z to put it back. And then the blue circle will make our monkey spin right round like a top. All right, let's control Z and line it up again, because there's another way that we can do rotation that I want to talk to you about. So first thing I'm going to do is click the select box gimbal on the left so that I'm not using the rotation gimbal anymore. And mm, I can't remember the hotkey for it. So I'm going to look in the menus, object, transform, rotate out. Oh, there it is. It's R. So I'm going to pull out of the menu, press R on my keyboard and then move my mouse and click to finish the rotation. Ah, but again, this rotation was not very good. It wasn't very clean. It was, it was rotated at an odd angle. So I need to undo my rotation and see if I can learn how to constrain my movements. How do we undo our rotation? Well, object clear and rotation is R. So I'm going to pull out of the menu and press alt R. That's how we undo it, which kind of makes sense. G was for movement. Alt G undid the movement. R is for rotation. Alt R undoes the rotation. Now I'm going to press R again, but I want to, I want to do that barrel roll trick. So how do I do that? Well, press R to start the rotation, but then press Y to lock the rotation 
to the Y axis and be doing a barrel roll. And then click to finish the rotation. There we go. I'm going to Alt R to undo the rotation. I'm going to start the rotating again by pressing R. And then I'm going to press Z. And now I'm spinning around like a top. And I can end that rotation at any time by clicking. And then Alt R to put things back. And then R X to spin around up and down. So that's how we constrain rotations when we have when we're doing it with the hotkeys. And both are good methods and are just fine. I'm gonna press Alt R to undo my rotation or to clear my rotation. Now we're gonna jump right into the next transform command, which is scaling. Scaling means making things bigger or smaller. So how do we do that? Once again, a couple of different ways. One way is the scale tool, which is just below the rotate tool. The scale tool looks like a little box with an arrow pointing to a bigger box. And if you click on that, you'll notice that our, our object now has three lines on it. One red, one green, one blue, and then a big white line around it. And if we click on that white circle, it's not line, it's a circle, click and drag on that, we can make our monkey bigger or smaller. And if we go too far, it might even flip upside down. There we go, make it big. Now, what are the, what do you suppose the red, green, and blue lines do? Well, let's click that red box there and drag and notice, aha, now we're making it thinner or wider without making it taller or longer. In fact, we can make it longer by clicking the, the green box and we can make it taller or shorter by cl clicking the blue. Now I'm going to undo my rotate or uh, my scale by just hitting control C a couple of times to get back to my original monkey. But notice that with our scaling functions, we have that little blue plane. Do you remember in the movement, that blue plane moved things in everything but the blue direction, the Z direction? I wonder what it does now. Let's click and drag on that tiny little blue plane in our gimbal and look at that. It is wider and longer in proportion to each other but not getting any taller. Undo that. Let's try the red plane in our gimbal to make it, uh-huh, yep, taller and wider, but not, or taller and longer, but not any wider. Undo that. And then we can use the green one to, well, from the view, it doesn't look like much until I turn it sideways and we realize, oh, it's taller and wider, but not any longer. And let's undo that. So that all's pretty neat, but there's another way. I'm going to once again click on the box select tool so that I get rid of that gimbal and clear it out. And then under object transform scale is S. So I pop out of the menu. Now that I remember that, I just hit S and I can scale it bigger and smaller. But just like with movement, I can hit S and Z to make it only go taller or S and X to make it only go wider or thinner or S and Y to only make it go longer or shorter. And before we go on, I want to clear the rotation. So instead of undoing it this time, we're going to go to object, clear, and see that it's Alt S, which makes sense. G moves, R rotates, S scales, so Alt G undoes the movement. Alt R undoes the rotation, so Alt S would undo the scale. So I'm just going to hit Alt S. And boom, all of my scaling is undone and our monkey's back to its original shape. Now, if I hit S and this time I hit Shift Z, it will scale it in everything but the Z. It'll get wider and longer, but not taller. Alt R to undo my, or Alt S to undo my scale and then scale it in the Shift X and it gets taller and longer, but not wider. Alt S to undo that. Fail Shift X or Shift Y is the one we haven't done. And it gets taller and wider, but not longer. And hopefully by now you're getting pretty good at the basic idea of how these transforms and clearing of transformings work. So now that you know how to transform in all the different ways, I have one more thing to show you. There is another tool. Over here on the left, where we've got the move tool, the rotate tool, the scale tool, just below that 
is a combined transform gizmo tool. Click that and you will see that this has, it has the little squares from scaling, it has the arrows from moving, and it has the rotation buttons. Now the circle in the middle, if you click and drag that, moves it according to our viewport. So at this weird angle, it's going to move it at a kind of diagonal angle to our movement. Whereas, let me just reset that movement. If I look from the front, that one will allow me to move like that. Likewise, you can rotate in all sorts of different directions. You can scale in all sorts of different directions. However, there is nothing for scaling in all axes at the same time, at least not that I know of. If you find a way to do that though, uh, let me know in the comments what I'm missing on this gimbal. I admit, I don't use the gimbal very much. I, I use the hotkeys, but I'm old school. And I think some of you watching are probably gonna find the gimbals. A little bit easier so I wanted you to know about this this super powerful tool <laughs> so now we have all the tools that we need to be able to move and rotate and change our our objects in blender and what I want you to do for homework is to practice all of these so I want you to to take Suzanne here and I want you to move her to one quadrant and then rotate her so that she's pointing back at the origin at the center point right here and then scale her but only scale her in one direction then move her to another quadrant and point her at the origin and scale her in another direction then move her to another quadrant point her to the origin scale her in another direction move her to the another quadrant point her to the origin and then scale her in a, a different direction a different way just move rotate scale move rotate scale and i want you to practice doing this however you want now i'm just going to really quickly clear out those lines there so that i can show you the first two steps so i'm going to do it like this i'm going to move and constrain the movement to the xy plane then rotate around the z so she's pointing more or less at the center and I'm going to scale her just into Z. Then I'm going to move her to the second quadrant, point her at the origin, and I'm going to scale her in the X this time and keep doing this all the way around two or three times. And you might notice that the scale function doesn't behave exactly like you expect. For now, don't worry about why that is. We will talk about that in a later video, but for now, I just want you to practice that motion. Move, rotate, scale, move, rotate, scale, just so that you get used to doing that motion. Go around two or three times, and then I'll meet you in the next video where we're going to do something pretty darn cool. But you guys are doing great. You, you're, you're learning so much, and I hope that you feel like Blender is not as as strange as it sounds on the outset, but I think that you're doing fantastic and I want you to know that I care about you. I like you. You are a child of God and you, you mean something to me. So take care of yourself and if you can, take care of somebody else and I'll see you next time.